How would you describe your latest book to someone who hasn't read it? Um, I would describe my latest book um, as a book that combines really the three elements, which is differentiation, graphic organizers, and critical and creative thinking. It really is a way that those three pieces come together. And the book basically addresses six different ways to differentiate using nine different gra graphic organizers. Beyond that, each one of those thinking skill graphic organizers have rating scales and rubrics. And those rubrics give language so that each response, each level of response on the graphic organizer has a tool that teachers can use or students can use as a self-assessment tool to drive a quality response. So we're not just looking at the end result, the answer, if you will. We're looking at the process of their thinking and helping them build that quality through all the components until they get to the answer. So the beauty of the book is that it has, the thinking skills have graphic organizer formats, procedural language, and feedback tools that are specific to it. How does this book differ from previous books that you've written? The book is different in a variety of ways. The um, second book I wrote was on differentiation, but it certainly didn't focus on the graphic organizers, although it talks about higher level thinking. This was a book that really brought together all of my work, and it brought it together in a different way. It wasn't that I looked at previous books and just put them all in, a, in one new book. I took the previous work, and I looked at the principles of differentiation, and I said, using graphic organizers are great tools, but it doesn't get you to higher level achievement, per se. I wanted to look at the principles of differentiation, why we're doing what we're doing, why are you using this graphic organizer tool, purposeful learning and teaching with intent. So this book is different in that way, where I'm trying to talk through that lens in the book and saying, let's think about, do you want to foster critical or creative thinking in this lesson? If you do, here are some tools to help you do it. Have there been any other major influences in the development of your book? I would say from a personal point of view, the influence would be the 21st century emphasis on we really need to look to what we want our classrooms to look like now. And if we still keep doing the same old instruction the same way, just to get better scores, I think it's not going to help our students in the 21st century. So as all this language has come about, about a 21st century learner and being a good critical creative thinker, problem solver, communicator, um, are key pieces that I think are important in the field, but teachers, again, don't have any tools to translate that. How do they help that to happen in the classroom? Most teachers think of the 21st century as technology, um, and that certainly is a piece of it. But students need to be able to think critically and creatively to use that information, and more importantly, to produce information just like our web has gone from 1.0 to 2.0, we're now looking more for students to produce rather than to just consume information and tell it back. So I would say what's going on with 21st century learning has heavily influenced me. So the richness is in the teacher actually modeling through using these tools, the critical and creative thinking, so that the students actually embody it into their practice of thinking. I find often some teachers will say I'm not creative and so they try to be creative in saying um, I give choice of product for them and that's lovely but it's not really helping the student who is a creative learner and a creative thinker to really think about content creatively, to play with ideas, to expand on ideas and go beyond. Um, I talk about creativity and innovation in some of the magazine articles I've written. And so if we want to go there with students, the product is just 
the end result, the, the fancy multimedia product, but it's the content in the product that needs to demonstrate that creative thought. So I've designed those tools to help teachers to actually feel like they've got a support because there's the language they can say when I want you to elaborate on something. This is a strategy you can use. You can use this elaboration wheel and we can put force associate two words that don't usually connect force them together in a sentence to come up with an unusual and varied sentence. And when you look at the ideas that come out of an activity like that, they move far beyond what a direct question would elicit. And so students start to see that a strategy like that is a very helpful tool to produce creative ideas. And it doesn't seem too hard to do because they've got a structure that helps them. The other piece that I think is so valuable is that the graphic organizers all have procedures. So it's actually the teacher has a window into the way the student is processing that information. They can actually see, oh, with decision making, they only came up with three ideas and they made a good decision, but I think we need to go back and practice brainstorming because they should have been generating many more ideas and they would have come up with a better decision. So all of the graphic organizers, whether they're creative thinking with the elaboration wheel or critical thinking with decision making, really look at what does it mean when you ask them to elaborate on something or decide and here's what I mean when I'm asking you to do it. What are the main benefits educators will get from reading this book? I think the main benefit certainly is to have a tool, an accessible tool that they can pick up. Some teachers will say to me, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't have any questions in my curriculum that uses the word assume or whatever. And I bring to their attention, if you just pop out a verb, you can substitute those verbs. The content lesson, you're still doing review of the content or practicing the content that doesn't change, but you can substitute out the verbs. So the benefit, and um, I'm hoping, is that teachers have a support by having these graphic organizers. The other piece is when I originally wrote the book, it was 60 pages longer, and uh, the edit, it was getting too really long for a graphic organizer book to be sold at a reasonable rate. And um, I was working with some teachers at the time, and I said, gee, you know, I have to cut 60 pages from my book. I think I'll cut, just cut out all the rubrics and the rating scales because who's going to use them anyways? People just want the graphic organizers. And they all looked at me and they said, no, don't. That's what we need. We don't know how to give them feedback. All we know is to correct a paper and look at the answer. I mean, we don't know. You know, this helps us give language to, well, this, this response is obvious, this is superficial, or this is, you know, shows sophistication. When I do that for each step, it's an incredibly powerful tool. And so because of their feedback, um, I cut out a, a couple of graphic organizers and I kept in the feedback tools. But I think, you know, my hope is that they have support for what they would like to do and they don't have to go and make it all up themselves. It's there for them. Um, in the book, I emphasize differentiation, the six different ways to differentiate. And so um, that's the other piece that, that mixes into the, to the blend because we don't, I'm not promoting necessarily one graphic organizer for all. So you have students who are great creative thinkers who may be struggling learners and they're having fun with putting words together or looking at analogies in what way is the rainforest like a lollipop. Um, they're having fun with wordplay but reviewing concepts where an analytical thinker would not value that type of lesson. They'd think it was silly and, and why are we doing this kind of thing. And that's fine. You would be able to flip into the critical thinking graphic organizer. So in my book, when I talk about differentiation, I talk about not just ability levels, but cognitive styles as well. Who are critical thinkers, who are creative thinkers? Some of us certainly as adults can do both. But my concern is that we are losing students who are very creative 
And if they're lucky enough to connect to the arts, they have an outlet. Um, if they're just cognitively creative and they're sitting in your classroom and you don't feel like you know how to do creative lessons, you know, these, these are the tools that are available. So I, my hope is that they're practical tools that teachers can use in the field. It's not just theory, they're all research-based, but something that's practical and useful. Have you noticed with teachers and their students using the graphic organisers and the mechanisms for feedback that the common language really starts to develop and students themselves start feeling confident with articulating these skills? Yes, absolutely. And what's great is they can justify their thinking through the process. I mean, they'll give it right back to you. I, I see twofold. Um, one is, just as you're saying, that is a, a real benefit uh, and they're able to express that. So that's very rewarding. The other is actually the visual formats. I designed the graphic organizers with two formats, one which is pictorial and one which is linear for different styles of learners. And the judge graphic organizer has steps, but the visual for the judge graphic organizer looks like this. And with the fingers coming together with the reasons and then citing sources, and there are other pieces to it, but this is sort of the image of fingers coming together. And I was doing some work in a school and I was doing some follow-up and one of the students walked down the hallway. I don't know what they were talking about and he was going like that. And I thought, oh my God. I mean, he, the imagery was locked in his head. And sometimes those processes for kids who are visual, boy, those formats, those pictures are right there. So that's another helpful memory tool that's great with the graphic organizer. Some kids will remember the procedural language and that's fine and other kids will just see the image yeah. of where, where the responses flow. So it's, it's interesting, it's all very interesting. Patty, I'm getting the feeling through the way that you're expressing the importance of creativity and your concerns around students losing that creativity, that this is really a book that you're encouraging playfulness at a cognitive level about how you actually utilise it within the classroom, that it's important as a teacher to think critically and creatively about the use of, of this as a tool for themselves as well. A lot of teachers will say that to me. Um, you know, and really these are life skills. So the fun part about this is there's, all, there's in a sense a dual, a dual focus here. As teachers, we want them to know, understand, apply content information, do great on the test and have achievement rise up um, and reach struggling learners and different kinds of learners. Um, but really they're life skills. So you're giving students tools to help them organize their thinking. And a lot of students need that, you know, irregardless of ability. And so it really helps them. I have one on prioritize. And for myself, I have trouble prioritizing in areas where I really do a lot of research because I think it's all important, you know? And so I look at my own graphic organizer and I'm thinking, this is really pretty helpful. I wish somebody had given me steps years ago. So, um, and students will see that as well. I mean, you hope they internalize those processes and own it and go forth for the rest of their lives with those processes because they are really life skills.